can you just be like I can't just be I and can't. just enjoy the day? Leanne and I'm said like, to me yeah. the other day, she goes, I'll sit on the porch and read a book. I go, I read a book. Yeah. About me? <laughs> you want me to read my book about me? I'll do that. Am I in Tom's book? I'll read his book. I'm not gonna sit there and read a and Huck Finn novel. Yeah. I was like, I just don't get it. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I've got some classic podcast cringe for you, and who better to bring it to us than two of our best customers, Tom Segura and Bert Kreischer. But this time it's a little bit different, because instead of Tom attacking his fans for getting bored of him bragging about his houses, cars, and watches, Bert found himself on the receiving end of a Tom Segura pep talk. Remember? You just gotta change your attitude, bro. So it started yet again with Bert turning the podcast into a therapy session. Man, this guy's got a lot of problems. It's like clockwork with these guys. They're so rich and famous now that any conversation they engage in inevitably turns into a discussion about themselves and their problems. Forget about entertaining your fans, right? And for Bert, well, he feels a little hard done by at the moment. He's been working so hard and it's taking its toll on him. So he opened up to Tom about his latest problems in the hope of getting some sympathy and guidance. But he forgot who he was talking to because Tom wasn't having any of it. And so he started to give him the talk. Like anytime that anyone's with me for any minute of any period of time, they're like, how the fuck do you do it? Red Band told me last night, you know what you need to do? Take some time off. And I was like, okay. I was like, sure, man. And he was like, no, you do. And I was like, I was like, I, I, I mean this, I mean this f as a friend, but like, you have no idea what my life's like. Like no yeah. idea. I don't mean that. Like I'm overwhelmed. I'm just saying like, I got, I got a lot going on and so like that's I'm true just trying to keep there my head above there is water. a degree though of truth that you should acknowledge in that statement though right no no yeah. no i can't take that from red band no no, no. i, I don't mean, mean i love red band i, I love mean, red band I, like let's take him out of the picture the degree of truth that i'm talking about that like one we all have to have some acceptance over this at some point is that ultimately especially if there's tons that you're committed to tons, you do have to remind yourself. And I'm not saying you, Bert, specifically. Yeah. We all do this. That you are the one who sets the pace and the commitments. It's, it's about the fact that, like, and I think you do struggle with this. I have struggled with this as well. It's about, like, having some no's. Like, no to this, no to that. I think... Because you prioritize things that way. When you say yes to everything, you're actually saying no to some of the things you give a shit about. And you're saying halfway yes to some of the things you care about because you're too spread out and you're too, you're too exhausted to do everything well. No, I, I haven't run into that yet. I, can, I mean, I'm, I'm achieving at a pretty high level. And so it was at this point that both Tom and Bert realized where this was going, but due to the severe lack of awareness in that studio in general, and the elephant-sized egos behind each man, it slowly descended into a tit-for-tat of who's more busy, who's got more problems, and who's more successful. I hope people can hear what I'm saying, and not just, and not just hear what you're saying and go, because you're right. You're right. You're definitely right. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm, <laughs> I'm not, not saying it to be right. I mean, I'm. I'm. I'm saying it just because. I, I look. I need the reminder too. When I say this thing, it's not about. You're, I would giving love. You I would love your pace of life. Well, no, but no, but like, hang on. Well, the, okay. So, like, perfect example. I, I I signed up for the fucking craziest tour. Yeah, but but I'm my tours as crazy, and I fly to Austin once a month to do a podcast. And like, I like, I, and you're right. I overpack my schedules. Yeah. Like we all have a crazy tour. You have your, I, I wish I didn't have a fear of flying. I wish I, that was the number one. Yeah. I wish I didn't have a fear of flying. I'm jealous of you. I'm jealous that you fly home sober and you like look at a paper and you have a coffee on the plane and then you get home and you play with the kids and then you yeah. like work out. Like I would love that. But instead I get 
all worked up when I have to fly. I wish I could get rid of that. I wish I could get rid of that. For me, I have to have the structure when I'm home. Like when I'm home and I don't get home often. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like. But do you ever. Uh, but hang on. The last thing I'll say, and this is, I mean this respectfully, but like you have the, I hope people hear this right. You have the luxury of being wanted young. Like you have the luxury of people wanting you when you were younger in the business, before you guys had kids, you were blowing up. You guys got money before me and Leanne got money. And we watched you guys like, like just like, I remember going to your houses and being like, holy shit, like when the fuck did this happen? And then you go to the next house, I'm like, you're at the fuck. And you guys were very taking it in pace and, and all that. But I think I got it later. Mm -hmm. So so when I got it later, I'd already had two kids. They were already in like middle school. And then all of a sudden I got all these opportunities that you got presented from like say what, 35 mm -hmm. to the rest of your life. I got presented at say 47, 48 till the rest of my life. Hmm. I think we're getting to the root of the problem here. It seems that Bert's problems stem from his fear of flying and reliance on alcohol and being jealous of Tom Segura for being richer and more successful than he is. But hey, let's have a little fun. Why don't we all do a shot every time Bert says, I feel like. Someone said it to me when we were at the US Open doing the first Fully Loaded show. Yeah. They're like, can you believe you created this? What, what, what was the inspiration behind creating this? And I said to them candidly, if I didn't create it, no one would ever ask me to do it. Like if I didn't do this, no one was gonna say, hey, we want Bert. Like if I didn't force, so you created the thing you wanted. I created the thing I wanted. If I, it, and like when I started doing social media to promote my shows, it was because no one gave a fuck, and so I was like, I got to make this happen for Bert. Yeah, I need to get behind Bert and make this happen. Whereas you have the luxury of you still, Tommy has have like fucking twenty years of a career to go that it, everyone's excited to see, including myself. I am on a fucking timeline. I feel like where I go, I feel like Tupac. Where I go, We're only like six, seven years apart in age. I know, but but you had a jump on me by another ten years almost, like by like another five years. So that you feel like you're working on a timeline, right? I now. feel like I am. I feel like I feel like I got fully loaded. I got an I, I like specials. Like you're still like two specials ahead of me. I'm like I'm like here we go. Like I got I got to fucking write. I got to get on stage. I got to do stand up. Like I feel like I feel like I st the the starting gun went off and I didn't hear it or I wasn't paying attention. So I'm like behind and so I pack myself. Like I watch. I mean this. Once again, I mean this with love, but I watch what you're doing here and it, in, in YMH, and it's not just the shows. The shows are fucking awesome, but what you're doing as a business is so inspiring. But you got to remember, I'm just getting inspired. You were inspired by someone fucking five years ago that I did not see that happen for. And so then I, I just started my production company. You've had YMH for fucking i remember when you told me i'm gonna start taking this seriously and I, I remember going like what like the podcast like i didn't get it so i'm always late to the party and when i show up at the party i feel like i feel like this is a great analogy i'm always late to the party i feel like everyone's been drinking and i gotta catch up <laughs> and so i'm doing shots and i'm snorting coke yeah. and i'm smoking weed and then maybe sometimes it looks like i'm out of control but like i like i feel like I feel like taking these days off. I, I wake up going, I yeah. wake up going, I'm not doing shit with my life. Wow. Okay. I think I've got a better grasp of what the actual problem is. Bert's just jealous of Tom. And while I was watching this, I started to get a little nervous because we know what Tom's like when people compare themselves to him and whinge and complain about how he's rich and they're not. He doesn't want their poorness to make him feel bad about being rich. And unfortunately, my suspicions were correct. And, well, the way Tom responded to Bert's whinging and whining turned out exactly how I had feared. Here's the thing. If you're, if you're still mad about this, just know that it's your mindset and you're thinking like a fucking loser. But... You don't have to. You don't. You can change the way you think, but you have to accept the way you're thinking right now is not going to get you anywhere. You're being bitter. You're being petty. You're insecure. You're not confident. And you can change that, but you have to be proactive. Fuck. Sorry, guys. Wrong clip. Here's the clip I meant to play. Whoops. I feel like everything that you're saying makes tons of sense, and I totally understand everything that you mean very clearly, 
But I think even you just saying it, part of your brain has to also understand that you don't have to view it exactly that way. Like, it's almost like you can see why you're seeing it that way, yeah. but that you also get that like, if you don't do everything in the next two months, you can spread some of that stuff out over six months and have a pace that is more enjoyable to your life and to your health. And like, I, think, I feel like some of that still has to register to you, you know, that, that you know that it doesn't have to be like this all the time, all the time, all the time. It does not have to be like this all the time. And, and, and to be honest with you, the reason I'm taking so much time off right now yeah. is because both girls are home yeah, for the summer good. and I'm spending time with them and I'm trying to, I'm trying to enjoy it. I, I do have this inner voice that I do have this inner voice that when I wake up, if I, if I don't have like a, semi busy day like a semi like at least like a podcast yeah. or i feel like i'm not doing anything with my life where i go mm -hmm. i'm just wasting what am i just gonna sit here yeah like I, I feel like i'm wasting my time we're the same with a lot well, of things I, we're, we're we're very similar yeah. i think i'm starting to realize how similar we are the more we know each other because yeah. i always thought i always thought you were the i don't give a fuck guy like just like i don't give a fuck like and just like things will happen and then i see you no busting your ass to yeah. get deals done and yeah. i go like yeah you know, i definitely give and i and i'm the same way i mean christina's always like can you just she what does she say to me she goes i just get home from a tour and and she's like what are you doing tomorrow i go well tomorrow i'm gonna do this i'm gonna go fly a helicopter i'm gonna work out and she's like can you just be like i can't just be and just enjoy the day ah those damn helicopter flights huh unlucky so hey it turned out okay in the end you know, Bert should really consider himself lucky that he actually received some constructive criticism from Tom instead of being mocked and belittled the way Tom treats his fans who whinge and complain about almost the exact same thing. That's what friends are for, I guess. And at the end of the day, this really does just go to show we're only as happy as we perceive ourselves to be relative to everybody else. I mean, Bert's making a shitload of money. No doubt he could retire right now and live a comfortable life just doing a few gigs here and there and the odd podcast, maybe just one per week instead of eight. But it's not enough. Compared to his best buddy Tom Segura, well fuck, those helicopter rides, huh? So the next time you come home from a hard day at work, you might have a sore back from heavy lifting, or maybe you have a headache from having to deal with shitheads all day long. Spare a thought for our boy Bert, who has to endure endless alcohol-fueled flights and lots and lots of talking into a mic, sitting around with his best friends while they have staff to do all the heavy lifting for them, and also obviously to laugh at all their jokes. Don't forget, these guys are special. But if you do find yourself whinging and complaining about your life, don't forget all you have to do is just change your attitude. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> I've watched it 10 times.